Bennett to take our reporting on the supply chain issues further for you tonight. ABC Action News reporter McKenna King is looking into how Florida could help solve these problems in the future and what experts say about online ordering as we get into this holiday season. As dozens of cargo ships sit anchored off the coast of California waiting to dock, the Florida Ports Council is now encouraging shipping firms to send ships to the Sunshine State. We get it. Uh, decades ago, it was the shortest route from uh, Asian ports, including China and Japan, and uh, you know, it makes sense to, to stuff a lot of cargo flow through those uh, California ports. But now Ruben says while the trip may be quick, it may not be the most efficient or cost effective, especially as some ships sit anchored for months. Uh, it's about a seven day voyage through the Panama Canal. Uh, yes, it may be a little more expensive uh, to, to take that route on a water tour, but uh, you know, you're paying for mortgage fees, you're, you're paying for other fees over there, uh, just sitting off the coast, and your product's not getting to the shelves in time. As of yesterday, the Marine Exchange of Southern California reports 144 total ships in port at Los Angeles and Long Beach. 80 of those are at anchor or drift areas, and 64 are at berth, in all containing billions of dollars worth of merchandise and goods on board. We have the opportunity to provide those shipping lines and beneficial cargo owners that uh, uh, a more efficient route that can get their product not only to the third largest domestic market in the country, but also to other markets outside of Florida within two days. And Ruben says the Florida ports are ready to take on new business. In a statement from Port Tampa Bay, they say they're not seeing congestion or delays and that, quote, our ports stand ready to welcome new business and serve as a supply chain alternative and solution. We realize how important it is to get those goods to market uh, to not be the Grinch that stole Christmas. Ruben adds that it's not something that can change overnight. We need to send that message to the major retailers. But something he's hoping Congress will work on in order to create more efficiency in the future. COVID added to it, but I think it's it's just, it, it, you know, we've got a growing population that's not slowing down anytime soon. Uh, so it's, it's I, I think this is a reflection of a mindset. In the meantime, as the logjam persists, he says if you have not started holiday shopping, it's getting to be too late. It hasn't quite hit yet for most of the consumers. It's starting to. Prices are going up. So it, it's going to become a bigger issue in the next few months. McKenna King, ABC Action News. And if you want to learn more about this, we took a deeper dive into how the supply chain ended up where it is right now. That report posted on our website, abcactionnews.com, as well as some key shipping dates to keep in mind over this holiday season. Learn about crypto. There was a tense face off between warships from the United States and Russia. A U.S. Navy destroyer and a Russian anti submarine warship came within 60 meters of each other. The incident occurred during Russian Chinese war games, the Sea of Japan. Russia's defense ministry said that one of its warships, the Admiral Tribute, chased away a U.S. Navy destroyer after it attempted to violate Russia's territorial waters in the Sea of Japan. The incident took place as Russia and China were conducting naval exercises in the area. The Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement that at around 5 p.m. local time, the destroyer USS Chafee, which had been operating in the Sea of Japan for several days, quote, approached the territorial waters of the Russian Federal Federation rather, and attempted to cross the border. Russia's Admiral Tribune's destroyer issued a warning to the U.S. ship about the invisibility of such actions as the area was close to navigation due to the exercises with artillery fire. Earlier on Friday, Russia has said it held joint naval drills with China in the Sea of Japan and practiced how to operate together and destroy floating enemy mines with artillery fire. Russian media reports claim that the Russian Defense Ministry summoned the U.S. military attaché, was told of the unprofessional actions of the destroyer's crew, which had rudely violated international laws on the prevention of collisions of vessels at sea. As expected, the United States military has denied the Russian version of events. A U.S. military said the guided missile destroyer Chafee was conducting routine operations in international waters in the Sea of Japan when a Russian destroyer came within 60 meters of the American ship. Though all interactions were safe and professional, Chafee 
potentially change course when the two vessels are less than 60 meters apart. The incident lasted about 50 minutes and took place in Peter the Great Bay in the west of the Sea of Japan. It was the second time in four months Russia has stayed chased a NATO member warship from its waters. In June, Russia accused a British destroyer of breaching its territorial waters of Crimea in the Black Sea and it said it had forced it away. Britain rejected Moscow's account of that incident, saying at the time its ship was operating lawfully in Ukrainian waters.